and then we'll be Okay, so I'm Sarah Ross from Norwalk Economic Development, and here's what we hope to cover today and get you out of here um, before an hour. Um, so we have our whole panel of local hosts here, so I'm going to let everybody introduce themselves, and then we'll jump right in. I'm Kelly Lippitz, the director of the Norwalk Area Visitors Bureau. I'm Art Mead, the Huron County Emergency Management Director. I'm Matt Roach with Norwalk Ohio News. I'm Kayla Strauss with Norwalk Economic Development. So this is kind of your planning team for business prep, and uh, you can guess by our, our organization names that we all bring something a little different. Um, it's really important every time we're talking about the eclipse, we have art here from emergency management just so that we can be prepared for safety um, on this big day. So here's what we're going to cover. Um, we'll just do a basic level set. What are we talking about here with the eclipse? Um, we'll talk about our local resources, where we stand about a year out, and um, then we'll get into our guest speaker. So I'm going to save his introduction for a moment here. Uh, so level set, we're talking about the total solar eclipse, the great North American eclipse, and Dan will get you all kinds of more fun info. Um, but just for your calendars, the big thing to know is Monday, April 8th, 2024, at about 3.12 in the afternoon, and Matt just... Uh, told us it's 48 weeks away, so the countdown is on. Um, I'll turn it over to Kelly for any other details you want to share just to level set about the eclipse. Yeah, so we have been working on the back end of this for, um, art has been on it for about two years, and we came on in, oh, late last year, beginning of this, um, this year, to start to help with the community planning piece and the business prep piece. Um, so we have built a website. Um, it is still a work in progress. We've been adding on to it as we go as that general resource um, for everything to kind of filter to it. So it's kind of that one-stop shop. On there, there is currently, you can submit any questions if you have any events. Um, and as we're receiving those, we are updating the website as we go. And also as we're learning more information of some different things that we can do. Um, a lot of our first part of the planning was the logistics piece of it um, and really that safety, that safety piece. Art has a real good handle on it. So now we're into the how can we uh, make sure that all of you are prepared? How are we going to be able to receive um, the amount of tourism? And then how can we keep everyone safe and have a good time with it? Um, so the website is um, right at NorwalkEclipse2024.com. Um, we also have um, a WENS number, which we will put that in the chat. So if um, EMA has the system where you can get the any sort of emergency alerts, they have been gracious enough to give us our own. Um, so what we're gonna utilize that for, you can text Huron County Eclipse to the number, and as there's any updates that go further, we will, um, you'll get a nice text message out um, and just notify you that there is something new out there to look at. Um, so right now we are really working on the event piece. What are we gonna do with everyone that's here? How are we really going to help? So um, we've had a lot of organizations reach out and offer assistance, and that's really how we're gonna get all of this done. Um, so we're very currently just working on who, where the large events are gonna be, um, and uh, how are we gonna be able to support those. And then Matt, do you want to tell everybody a little bit about what Norwalk Ohio News is doing? Sure, sure. Our, our role is really to help keep the community informed. So we've started a 52-part series each week, counting down. On Monday, we have a, uh, another installment of the series. We have Brian Leda, who's the AccuWeather meteorologist and also does their uh, celestial things, has the Stargazers report each month, things they can look for. And he's writing exclusive content for Norwalk Ohio News, kind of the science behind eclipses, uh, trans history. He was in Tennessee right on the center line for the 2017 one, and he brings a nice perspective. So he's sharing a couple facts about eclipses each week. And then we have updates from local officials, upcoming events, and that sort of thing. Yeah, so speaking of people visiting other communities like visiting Tennessee, um, we wanted to share just a little graphic from a community that uh, was in the path of totality in 2017. This comes from Hopkinsville, Kentucky, which we consider kind of a comparable community to Norwalk and Heron County area. And this is kind of why we're really excited uh, from what they could track was over $28 million in economic impact. Um, and so they have some information here about the visitors, 
and all of that that they experience. So this is kind of what sets things apart for Norwalk and here on County. We are directly in the center line, um, path of totality. And if you go on eclipse.ohio.gov, you can zoom in on that center line and see, you know, exactly what street intersections it's going to cross over. So these are some things we're pretty excited about and why we're having these prep webinars 11 months out. So you can start thinking about what your business might want to do for your employees, your customers, um, and even for um, economic opportunities for your business. I think that's all from us. Art, do you want to add anything on the emergency side? Not at all. It's, if anybody has any questions as far as private businesses, as far as security or response process during the eclipse, please reach out to my office and we will work with you as much as we can. Yes, absolutely. And anytime throughout this uh, discussion today, you can chat in questions. Kayla's helping us monitor so we don't miss anything. Uh, so please don't be shy. Um, and with that, I'd like to introduce our guest speaker, uh, Mr. Dan McGlon. And Dan, if you want me to sh stop sharing my screen, I can. Um, but thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I believe your website said you're an eclipse chaser. <laughs> uh, I, I'm a lot. <clears throat> I'm a lot of things, but an eclipse chaser is definitely one of them. Yes. And I appreciate you uh, having me here and giving me the opportunity to speak to your community. It's it's wonderful. It is exactly what I want to do all over the country. I am doing it. Schools, libraries, museums, chambers of commerce, and you guys are right on the center line. But it's important. Everybody doesn't have to go right to the exact intersection. Okay, <laughs> we we don't want to uh, have gridlock, but um, it'll be a very exciting day for Norwalk. Great. So we um, were hoping that you could share a little bit about what that's like in a community when this happens. Um, you know, that's that's oh. we don't know. Are people looking at that map and zooming in? Um, you know. Yeah. What's their planning like before coming here? And then, you know, what can we expect? Yeah, and, and people do that. People do. I, I'll need for you to uh, enable uh, uh, screen sharing, if you don't mind, for me. Um, I wanted to run through my PowerPoint and show my little video and that sort of thing. Yeah. That's okay. And uh, everybody, I am uh, I am an Eclipse chaser. I run Eclipse2024.org. I do all my own uh, mathematical calculus. I mean, I've built my life, honestly, around eclipses. A couple of things, my family, music, and eclipses, and, and that's pretty much it. Well, teaching, I guess that was important too. But um, it, it's really an amazing thing that is coming to your community. And uh, I hope to show you and share just a little bit of that excitement. I've given uh, some of the panelists a preview of that, but I, I can't wait to, to share it with you guys. Uh, you will find that I'm I'm very passionate about it, and I I almost can't control it. So it's 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 so cool. It's why we travel the world to see eclipses, and I've seen 14, 15, something like that. I know people who have seen 37. That's like the world record, and most people haven't even seen one. So the whole point of this is to get some excitement building and to say, well, these are the kind of things that that you can expect. And I've got, I've got some slides that I can talk through, um, but let's see if I can uh, can share now. Perfect. And I'm going to share my entire uh, screen, which I don't have the option to do. Um, hopefully I'll be able to, um, well, hopefully I'll be able to show the video. Um, do, 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 do. So anyway, let's see, are we seeing my screen now? Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. So as I mentioned, I am, um, using all my bandwidth for the Zoom. I am um, Dan McGlon. I hail from a small town just west of Indianapolis, out in the country. It's called Clayton. Actually, I'm in a town called Belleville, which is so small it's not even a town. But um, this is my home base, is Hendricks County, and I uh, travel around and see eclipses. I ran the site eclipse2017.org uh, for the eclipse that happened six years ago. And that was a rousing success. Everybody in the eclipse uh, world was was worried would we be able to do a good job and get the word out, and we did. We helped a lot of people, and uh, it was it was wonderful. And so the natural progression was to change my domain name and have to start all over from scratch. And the, so there's eclipse2024.org that you can go to, and there will be a lot of information that I throw at you really fast. You don't need to take notes or or really uh, try to memorize anything. 
But there are two slides that I would like for you to please, um, I'll stop and let you photograph or whatever. So they've got some links on them and some places that you can go for additional information. This is one of them. Uh, this, if you can see the entire slide, this is the, the, the big six things that we offer for free to community schools, libraries, museums, you name it. And uh, Eclipse viewing information, the simulator that I'm going to show you, which shows what the Eclipse is going to look like. Uh, we have a 2,200 videos up on uh, YouTube uh, that are drawn from the simulator. We uh, have complete sets of uh, circumstances for 140,000 cities. And we have community pages where we host sites like Norwalk Eclipse2024.org. And um, we're very happy to do that, to get all of the official plans out and to help you promote um, one of the things we've worked really hard on is getting the SEO, so we're top of page one for all these communities, and that will help drive a lot of traffic uh, to your to your site. But this is um, this is one of the things I would like for you to check out some of the links here. By the way, everything on our site is, uh, I guess I'm going to admit people now because it looks like I'm the host. Um, everything on our site is in English, French, and Spanish, because this eclipse goes over Mexico and the uh, maritime provinces of uh, of Canada, Quebec and New Brunswick, where they, a lot of people speak French. And um, it was really important for me to have native speaking translators. No Google Translate is allowed. Everything is really good. And I have Canadians tell me the French is perfect. So I'm really happy about that. And if that's applicable for you, then um, then please make advantage of that. So... Excitement. A total eclipse is unlike anything you've ever seen before. And I don't care what that is. You talk about a drag race or the Indy 500 or kids being born or uh, getting your PhD. It, it, it's up there with all those things. And it is amazing. I would like to see if I can share my screen to show you a video. I can't even get off of the presentation. There we go. Um, Please let me know. I don't think that this is. I'm. I may have to reshare my screen to show you that. Oh, really oh, yeah. I would. I would like to share it with you. So I'm going to stop share. I'm going to reshare that video because I couldn't figure out how to do it before. I I do eclipse calculations and I have a problem with that. Now, can you see the entire video? This is Charleston, South Carolina, 2017. It is a kind of an ad hoc group of people who have gathered. And this is kind of like what happens in communities where you get people in an official viewing area. And it's not long. I've, I've kind of snipped out, but I want to show you. It was amazing. Unbelieving. It was unbelievable. Coco, what do you think? It was awesome. It was awesome. Mommy, what do you think? It was awesome. It was awesome. It was awesome. Oh, I can't even describe it. Here comes the sun back. So we have a lot of people gathered Look how dark it's in gotten. a public area. And for an hour and a half, they've been oh, waiting for the eclipse. And it's here amazing. it comes. And what I want you to kind of, kind of focus on is the levels of noise that happen. And when you think it's maxed out, it hasn't because that's amazing. I'm going to go ahead and stop it, but I hope that that gives you a little, just a little idea, just a little idea of the excitement and the absolute amazement that people feel just viscerally. Just, just it, it's a, it's a spontaneous reaction where people yell and scream and cry and 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 say things that they can't play the video for their grandmothers, and it's it's just amazing. And I think that's uh, I think that's something that um. Well, it's coming to uh, it's coming to a location near you. <laughs> In fact, it's coming to Norwalk, and I'm very happy to say 
that I have seen eclipses in all of these circumstances with a million people, with a couple people, by myself completely. And it's always amazing. There were three couples that got married during totality that I know of uh, in 2017. And there's already two that have contacted me. Um, and that's, I think, an amazing situation. So uh, no matter what your experience is, it's going to be spectacular. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be something you've never... Kids look up at sky instead of down at phones. Is that not a not a, not a great headline? <laughs> um, and there's one thing I want you to notice about all the people that are in these. We collected hundreds and hundreds of these newspaper headlines. This location was not in totality. None of these locations were in the path of totality. And still, people have this feeling of, oh, wow, this is something really, really cool that can bring us together. And it did for about six hours. It brought us together as a country. And it was really, really amazing. I love that picture. Um, the state stood still. People stood still. Yeah, because of the traffic jams. That, 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 was, that was cynical. I'm sorry. Um, this is what happened. We had people bonding, coming together. I know people in their 60s and 70s um, who remember their first eclipse because their parents took them to it or their grandparents took them to it. And this is one of the most important things I think we can do is to, to uh, inspire a new generation of scientists, of astronomers, of people who want real information uh, and, 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 and something to, to, to put into their family memory books. Um, this is my favorite picture. Good old Ethan. He's he's now six years older. I wonder what he's doing. But that was a, that was wonderful. So we have we have a, a, a very amazing situation coming right to Norwalk. In fact, look at that center line. Uh, this is the path of totality that, as the moon's shadow goes through space, it scrapes across the Earth and it creates this path. Where if you're in this path, you get to see the stars come out and the dark sky and the orange glow on the horizon and the corona and Bailey's beads and, and, and all those cool things that are beautiful. As, as you get farther away from this path, you get less time in totality. And then as you are outside of the path, you only see a partial eclipse. And a partial eclipse is interesting. It certainly is, is something worth uh, participating in. It's just not totality. So it's important for everybody to understand what the experience will be and that it will be interesting no matter what. But you guys are perfectly positioned. You're, you're going to attract some people, especially if we have weather situations, uh, Toledo, Cleveland, uh, Erie, Fort Wayne, you know, these people, Columbus, which is barely outside the path. Um, we, we have a lot of possibility for people to be uh, coming to your location and inundating it. <laughs> so what I have on the site are a lot of resources that show, and I just finished this um, yesterday, and I wanted to show it to you. This is a, a, an animation that we have that shows uh, the partial phases in a lot of locations around northwestern Ohio or northern northwestern Ohio, and it looks like everything kind of happened in the same way, but it's not. The, the shadow moves from west to east, and it overtakes these communities in turn, and it moves to the east. And then as one community enters totality, another to community will leave. And, it, and it, it happens like this all the way from the Pacific Ocean to the Atlantic Ocean, and it just so happens to pass over northern Ohio. And... Um, I'm going to try to keep track of my time here. I'm still doing a really good job, but I don't want to talk too much. But there's just so much. This is this is kind of cool. And if you if you click on one of these uh, links, you'll be able to go to the city page that we have for for Norwalk, which has some information. You have your own uh, video on YouTube, and uh, we have this animation where all these resources can be embedded on a website or can be um, used for whatever purpose that you like. And I have places for them that where they're all uh, combined. And, and the purpose today is not to give you a, a tour of my website, but it is to show you um, kind of some of the things that, that, that we have going on. Um, the animation you've seen, the simulator, I want to show you in a second. So maybe I can come back to that. And I want to make sure we get to it before Q&A. So I want to make sure I give myself enough time. This is the last time there was a total eclipse in Norwalk. Uh, I did voluminous research. 
And uh, it was in 1806. I, I, I hope you saw it. It was June 16th of 1806. And Norwalk got about four minutes of totality. Uh, there is a website that, that, that lists, uh, that has an interactive map that you can go to. Um, Toledo was in the path, but it doesn't matter. This one's over. And this somebody, uh, it was a very famous eclipse because there was uh, uh, one of the uh, Native Americans who I think, I'm not sure who it was, Tecumseh, I think, who uh, they were trying to avert a war and, they, well, I'll make the sky go dark. And, and goodness, he did. <laughs> and they, they, they believed him after that. And uh, this was one of the first times that anyone ever used the word corona to describe uh, this isn't a very realistic picture of it, but it's the best we have from then, and it's amazing we have anything uh, from 1806. Um, so in 2017, we didn't have a lot of experience in the United States. Uh, it, this was a 1970 eclipse, just went up the eastern seaboard. This was the 79 eclipse, just hit the Pacific Northwest in the middle of winter. Um, this was the last time you had to go to find an eclipse that went all the way across the country, and that was in 1918. So um, and here's the next one that's going to happen in the United States, the next big one. There are a couple of small ones in Alaska and, and North Dakota, but there's a there's a big one coming in 2045. Well, 2045 is a long time from now, and it doesn't go over Ohio. So this is the one to see in 2024. Now, this is the next one that comes to Norwalk, and it will be September 14th of 2099. So there are potentially people alive today who would remember this 2024 eclipse, who would still be here to tell their grandchildren and great-grandchildren about the time they saw one. This, this is an important connection to the future. I think it would be great to open a time capsule uh, leading up to that eclipse, and that would, be, uh, that would be a great gift that we could give to, um, to our, uh, our future, um, future residents. So now we have a more sophisticated crowd. We have a lot of now we have a lot of people who've seen an eclipse. You know, they went to Hopkinsville, they went to Carbondale, they went to wherever, Madras, Oregon, uh, Charleston, South Carolina. And we have a warm-up eclipse on October 14th. That's a Saturday, and it is only a partial eclipse. It's annular out in the West, but there's no corona, there's no diamond ring. It's not a it's not a huge event like the total eclipse. It is a, a great event. But it's not it's not a total eclipse, and it will be partial uh, here in Indiana and for you in Ohio on uh, October 14th. I've got a little graphic there. This is the path of that one that kind of goes over Oregon and the Four Corners in Texas. There's a spot in Texas that gets both of them. Um, we have uh, I, I left these slides in because we have a lot of community planning. We have uh, emergency management represented here. This is this is something that's got to be thought through, and it's something that I really emphasize a lot of times. But you guys have it have it under control, and I want to kind of move on and um, talk about one thing. What do we do with them? We have activities. If you have a business or if you have anything that you can think of with a school or a church or a, any kind of an organization, you know, have think of how you could uh, incorporate the eclipse into something, eclipse cookies or cakes or flowers or, or art contests or, you know, just anything, special meals or, or, or you know, if you're a hospitality person, um, anything that you can think of that'll be eclipse themed because it's going to be that kind of a crazy day. Um, what do we do with it? How will they leave is important because in 2017, we had traffic jams. Here is the path of totality for 2017. And if I put kind of superimpose over that, a Google map of the traffic jams that were happening, you can kind of see what happened. And that is an actual map. We didn't make that up. Um, there were traffic jams in Wyoming on roads that maybe got, you know, a couple hundred cars a week and they were, they were four hour traffic jams. Um, it's, a serious situation because everyone wants to try to leave at once, but there is uh, uh, something that can help us. Uh, the, the NCAA Final Four game, championship game, is that night. It's Eclipse night. They, they, they thought about it. No, they didn't think about it. But it just happens to be that. And so if we could hold people in the community a little bit longer and, you know, get them to a watch party or a big banquet or, or a après eclipse, you know, event or something, they, they could they could trickle out and that could help with traffic planning. So that's something I'm suggesting to everyone who will listen. Plus, it gets us another day of them being in our uh, our community. So the pros, you guys are on the center line. 
And a lot of people are going to look at that path and they're going to say, well, I need to be on the center line because that's the most totality I'm going to get. And that is not to say that it's not good slightly off of that path because you're only going to lose a few seconds, even if you go 30, 40 miles. But being on the center line is a very special thing. And a lot of people will want to do that just because it maximizes the time in totality. I think you guys get like four minutes and three seconds or just, somebody will correct me. You can't get much more on the center line than having it come right through your downtown. So um, you saw how rare those eclipses are for a specific location. It's even rarer to have them uh, to be on the center line. Whenever I give a talk to the, the, the schools, I always suggest to the kids, go home and write down your experiences and put them in your family memory book. Um, make sure the historical society is documenting this because it's not going to happen. You guys won't be on the center line for, I mean, a thousand years. I mean, it, it, it's those kind of time frames. So it's a very, very special event. And many people are going to want to, um, to participate. Um, center line, center line. Uh, okay, so I wanted one more consideration. Then I want to show the simulator. I want to make sure I'm being uh, good with time here. I think I still am. We have lots of time for questions. Um, people are worried about the weather. All the eclipse chasers, everybody who's a friend of mine who wants to see the eclipse is like, well, you know, I've got to go to Mexico, got to go to Texas, because we don't care where we go. We, we don't care what time of day it is, what time of year it is, what the weather is. We've got to go to Mongolia, a little island in the Pacific. We, we don't care. We want to see the eclipse. So all the eclipse chasers are saying, well, Texas is the best. Well, this was eclipse day. So uh, it looks like there's a lot of clouds here. No, that's that's not bad. This is not bad. This is not even bad because there are places between those clouds that you can go. It was beautiful, crystal clear here in my home, and it was good all the way until you got to Texas. <laughs> so not saying that's what's going to happen, but it's a game changer. This this opened a lot of people's eyes and said, you know, we we might want to think about, you know, having some mobility. And there is good mobility all along this eclipse path. So um this this made a big big dent in a lot of people's plans because uh, that that's that's serious right there, and of course an eclipse chaser if it's the day before and we see something like that we'll just we'll just go four or five hundred miles we we don't care uh, we'll have a plane on standby to to fly somewhere because it's that important for us to see it um, for you guys um, you 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 want to make sure that you know if you've got if you've got bad weather by the way you're still going to have an, an interesting experience. Uh, unless it's completely overcast, raining and socked in, which has happened to me before. You go to, I went to China in 2009 and it was just, it was pouring rain the entire day. The, the front, it looked like this front, except it was all along the eclipse path and nobody saw anything. I mean, there were a couple people that got lucky and took their plane someplace and saw 15 seconds of the eclipse. I happened to set drinking glasses out and collected rain that fell during totality. I have a eclipse rain, a metaphor for my my ten thousand mile flight. So it it was um it was still a good experience, but it wasn't the one we wanted. But it 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 gets black. It gets totally totally black and dark. And it was really um yeah it was interesting. We saw the Great Wall, so what the heck. But um. Hopefully that won't happen and we'll have a day like this or better. Uh, I normally give an eye safety message. Uh, this is a completely different topic, uh, topic all on its own. You guys, I think, have that covered. Um, I have, uh, you know, uh, a little a a booklet that, written at a seventh grade level that talks about, you know, how to make sure that you're you're watching it safely. It's the most important message we have. We want people to have fun. We want them to come. We want them to have a good experience. We don't want any problems. We did a great job of getting that message out in 2017. And um, I want to do the same thing this time. So any questions on that? Uh, we've got experts on your panel. Um, I, I certainly have seen my share of eclipses safely. I'm not blind. And uh, there is a way to do it. And that's what we're going to have. St. Louis had theirs, and we're going to have ours now. And um what I want to do is stop this slide now, and here's my email address. Here's my website. Um, I haven't shown you the simulator yet. I'm about to because I have about, I'm going to take about five minutes and show it. Then we'll have time for Q&A. Um, the Eclipse resources are things that are really more for uh, the community planners. Uh, it, it's a synopsis, and, and I don't have time for it now, but I'd be glad to come back and show you. 
Um, the videos that we have are on YouTube. Um, they are extracted from the simulator. They have cool music and titles and everything. And we have versions of them that are suitable for a TV broadcast. Uh, no title, just the eclipse sequence, no music, just a 45 second of this is what the eclipse is going to look like. And so if you've uh, taken a picture of that, um, how am I doing panel, uh, please, on time? And do I have time to show the simulator for about five minutes? Yeah, that's good. Okay, I'm trying to trying to stay with it. As you guys can probably tell I can I can talk literally I all you got us very excited for sure. Oh, you know, that's that's the whole goal. I I knew it was I knew it was worth uh, only getting two hours sleep last night for us preparing. Uh, it, it really is. This is it's it's just no matter what you do, whenever you see an eclipse with people for the first time, you come back afterwards and you say, "Well, how was it?" And they always say, "You didn't even come close. That was the coolest thing I've ever seen." Which is also what they say exactly when it's over. It's like. Oh my God, that was the coolest thing I ever, when's the next one? Well, it's in 2099, so mark your calendar. But no, the next one is actually in 2026. A uh, nice sunset eclipse on the North coast of Spain, the mountains, yeah, nice, nice, cool. And you don't have to do any planning. You just get on a plane, you go and you see it. It's pretty cool. So, or you could go to Iceland for that one, or you could go to the Balearic Islands, or you could go to a cruise ship in the middle of the, you know, the sea. Cruise ships do go to eclipses. There are several cruise ships that are dedicated to that, and they they go. Antarctica doesn't matter. They go where where they are, and they uh, they they go to them. And then there are flights that take off, and they intercept the path. I mean, eclipse chasers have gone kind of silly about this, but that's that's the level of of, of what it does um, to you. So now I have to go to my simulator. The simulator started with all of those um, animations, that little blue animation that you saw, and it kind of took off from there. And I had a genius developer, always surround yourself with people smarter than you, you'll look great. And that was what I did. And I, I had the, we, we did the simulator for the eclipse that just happened a few weeks ago in Australia. But the simulator is you can go to any location you want. You can go to your backyard. Look at that center line right on the <laughs> right there. And um, we aren't seeing it, Dan. You might need to stop and reshare. Sorry about that. I, I appreciate you letting me know that. I was about to look really silly for a long time, um, which wouldn't be the first time. But the simulator, um, I got to it uh, with the link on my website, Eclipse Simulator, uh, crazy enough. And you can go to the total or, or, or any of the other eclipses. There's only three in there right now because it takes about six months to get one in. There's a lot of math that we have to do, a ton of math, actually. If you're scared of math, you don't want to know. Um, and if you like math, um, I, can, I can have a talk about how we do without formulas. I, conceptually, we can, we can talk about how that happens. You can go right to, right to your house and you can see the eclipse data for that location exactly. You don't have to worry about, oh, where in the city was this data uh, gathered from? We can, we can uh, show you the data right there, or you can see the simulator. And I'm gonna show it to you in the path. Um, I probably should show you one outside the path, but there's not a lot of time for it. And this is what you care about anyway. Um, we have basically four controls, a time slider, a fine time slider that will be important. You can barely see it moving the clock just a little bit. We have a zoom, which works with your, your mouse wheel. Um, and we have a clock that will run in real time if you want to kind of do a movie or kind of show that. But I'll show two different, we have, we have various scenes. You could put yourself at the ocean. We have a complete set of instructions. Uh, where you can read all about eclipses. Uh, you can do all this in English, Spanish, and French. Uh, we have a couple of educational things that I'll show. Uh, the glare is a feature that we have to talk about why it's important to have eye protection. Even when the eclipse is like almost total and it gets dark, 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 dark. No, it's still, it's still too bright. And um, even at 98, 99%, if you are outside the path, you always have to use eye protection. There is never a time that it is safe to look. But if you're in the path, then what happens is the eclipse continues to progress and the shadow comes towards you and you can see 
at the very end, you can see that shadow kind of rising up out of the western sky and overtaking you. And then uh, totality, I mean, the, 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 the diamond ring happens, the corona, stars start to come out. Uh, we'll definitely see Venus and Jupiter. Uh, we may see a couple other stars, um, depending on how, how, how actually bright it gets. And then that diamond ring is just gorgeous and people do go nuts. They go crazy, they yell and scream and they do crazy things. And then it's totality and you get this orange glow on the horizon, which is the same thing that the sunset is orange. You're looking through a lot of atmosphere toward a place where the sun is still shining, just like at sunset. You're looking through a lot of the atmosphere over to a place way off in the west where the sun may have set for you, but it's still shining. And that light goes through the atmosphere. All the blue gets scattered out. The blue that normally makes the sky blue, well, it all scatters out. And then you're left with the oranges and the reds. It is a full 360 degree sunset and it is amazing. And that's one of the problems with totality. There's too many things. There's the birds, there's the people, there's the temperature dropping, there's the stars coming out, there's the corona, the diamond ring, the, 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 uh, yeah, the, the darkness, the, the weird shadows, the orange glow, it's overload. Your brain literally runs out of hard drive space and it starts scrambling around for all the SD cards it can plug in to get all the data that's just flowing in. And, and, and that's what happens. And there are people who just stand there like, and they have all these experiments and all these cameras and they forget to do it because it just kind of overwhelms them and it does happen. So then the eclipse progresses. There goes the shadow. You can kind of see and you can pull this map out if you want, but the shadow is kind of an oval because we are east of the uh, center of the path. And then as it goes, as you saw in the animation, it moving from west, west to east, as it's over, there comes the eye safety message back and the diamond ring will happen at the bottom. The eclipse is over. Yay, time to go watch the game. And when's the next one? Because you're going to want to see one. Let me zoom in real quick. I have about one minute I want to spend on that. And I want to show you some of the, uh, when we get really close in, we will see some effects here. Uh, the edge of the sun has this layer called the chromosphere. And we do simulate that as the red. Um, we have Bailey's beads. These, these little broken up beads of sunlight. And if I turn off the corona, you can see them even better. Um, this is sunlight that is coming at us from the edge of the moon that is shining at us. The mountains are blocking it and the, and the, the valleys are allowing it through. We do know all the lunar topography because NASA's had the LRO orbiting and taking all this data for years and years. And it is a lot of math um, because that's different for everybody. If you're in Texas versus in Ohio, you're going to be seeing slightly different place on the edge of the moon. And so your beads will be slightly different. Um, and we do the calculations and that's what they that's what they will look like. Um, if you uh, OK, then the um, oh, I better turn it back on. There we go. And then the diamond ring happens and there and you can see the moon is moving against the sun as as time goes on. We don't normally see that motion, but. During an eclipse, you know, we're, we're used to the, the sun and the, and the moon kind of moving from left to right across the sky because the earth is turning, but the moon actually moves in its orbit around the earth, and that's what's causing it to encroach on the disk of the sun to create the eclipse and then to move on. And so we're seeing the moon in its motion, its orbital motion around the earth, and that's, that's kind of a rare thing. Um, one last thing, if you could turn off the darkness, you would see that shadow of the moon coming at you, overtaking you, centered on, uh, it's the total eclipse, and then moving off to go and grace someone else's sky. And that is also uh, accurate. Uh, you can barely see that shadow. Uh, you definitely can. Uh, some it's not going to be that bright that I just showed you, but that's 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 to study it. Uh, you've also got stars and planets. You won't see all those, but there's where they are in case you want to uh, want to see um, where they are located. And that I have run one minute over. So that is that is that. And I hope that that's uh, something that you guys can use. There's not too much of a learning curve. Um, it is very interesting, and uh, maybe I uh, just.
just real quick while we start maybe some q a in real time you can see you can see those beads disappear in front of your eyes you can see the diamond ring come out you can see it fade away and you can hear everybody going nuts basically one last thing we don't know what the corona is going to look like that's a best guess but a couple of weeks beforehand there will be some uh scientists that will come up with a uh, an estimate of what they think the corona will look like and i'll update the simulator at that point i truly am done sorry i hope i hope this has been enjoyable for you thank you so much definitely i mean my brain is spinning um we definitely want to hear from those uh, on the call. So either raise your hand or chat in a question. There's not too many. So, you know, you should be able to talk. But some things we thought about here while you're talking. Um, Dan has so many awesome resources to put on your website, uh, whether they're those or something else. I think that's a critical question. What do you need on your uh, company's website or other communication platforms? Um, he's talked a lot about the experience and once in a lifetime and people wanting to be there. So what does that mean for your staff? How are you planning for staffing um, and their families? Uh, we also talked a little bit about weather. So let's think about on the business side and the hospitality side, uh, what strategies do we need to have in place to mitigate weather changes and um, being hospitable to our visitors, uh, regardless of weather. How can we prepare for that? Uh, we're really here, Dan's here to push the amazing learning once in a lifetime science side of things. Kelly and I, we're here to push the hospitality side. We really want um, all these people who are coming to town to feel welcome. Uh, Art is here for safety. So uh, we have a lot of different things to think about. Um, and then just again, come early, stay late. How do we how do we help with that? So what questions do you guys have? What do you want to know from Dan who's experienced so many of these or, or any of us? What's eating at you? And Dan, we do have uh, one of the, I know you mentioned the 1806 eclipse, one of the board members from our historical societies on the call, so. Oh, do they remember the eclipse? <laughs> no? Come on. I think that's a very important historical society aspect of this. Very important. I think we've stunned them all. You can even chat it in if you don't want to mute. Or maybe they are just stunned from all of it. And they probably are. I probably talked too much and 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 either ran them off or put them. But um, um, can we talk about schools? Maybe. Do we know what the schools are doing on Monday the eighth? Most of our schools are already closed that day. Okay. Yep. So. so very good because of the getting the buses getting them on the buses during the eclipse would be would be very challenging um but plenty of opportunity for lesson plans or or uh, things like that um i um i also if there's anybody associated with the schools i have a complete astronomy curriculum of diagrams that i've created that uh, i can use to show or or do any kind of uh, eclipse demonstrations if if that's of interest our library was on. Are you guys still on? Carol, you have a question you want to talk or you want us to share? Well, I guess I was just going to ask him as we prepare to do community activities, what's been the most exciting community activities dad witnessed in his travels? Oh. Goodness, banquets, food, <laughs> um, a lot of things that have happened with other communities are things that are very, how, how do I put it? They they think of the things that make their community special and they emphasize them. Like maybe they'll have a, a, a get together at a, a rodeo or they'll they'll have something at an airport or a racetrack or, you know, something that's that's 
local to them. Like here in Indianapolis, they're going to have a million people at the 500 at, at the at the speed at the motor speedway. That's that's I think that's kind of cool, actually. <laughs> Um, I don't know what Norwalk has. Uh, you guys know your community perfectly, and you know what both visitors will want to experience and go away with as a memory of your location. Heck, one of them might go back to their town in Finland and want to be have a sister city arrangement. You you never know what kind of things this could spark. Um, and then also for your local, uh, for your inhabitants, you, you know, what kind of things do you guys do during the year? What festivals do you have? Um, what do you do at the at the fairgrounds or or you know anywhere that's that's important to you uh, as a community and and emphasize that or or work with them to to have a special day because you need as many people as possible to be controlled so that people aren't stopping by the sides of the road and they're not you know showing up in the Walmart parking lot and you know pitching tents and you know you just need to be really really cognizant of of the uh the traffic the porta potty situation the 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 food the water the hats the sunscreen um and and emergency management you know ambulances need to be able to get through and and crowd control traffic control that sort of thing um that's why we're really pushing our form on the website norwalk eclipse 2024.com if you are planning something please get us that information so we can along with Norwalk Ohio News, just share it far and wide. Uh, so everybody's really clear on parking and events at that time. Um, the more places that have the accurate information, the better. Um, our fairgrounds will be hosting uh, camping and some events that weekend. So stand by for more information and just get us what you have as you, as you go along with your planning. There's another thing I could mention. There are a lot of people who will want to have cars parking in their yard and charging for it or people pitching tents on their fields. Um, those are all interesting. Um, they are very serious from a liability perspective, and I would encourage you, you to encourage folks to work with the official uh, governmental agencies to make sure that they're they're you know we, we don't have a lot of that going on we have it controlled as much as possible um it doesn't have to cost anything it can be free but a ticketing system or something to 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 control the access and, and to make sure it's always it's going to be chaotic no matter what but we we have to impose as much of a standard on it as we can and that's not to prevent people from having fun but you know, we 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 need good information out there, and that's that's best funneled through official channels. I think. Looks like we have two more uh, questions. Um, one was from a Kiwanis Club about using, sorry, uh, use some of your educational information and put their Civic Club's logo on it. Uh, sure, you you can. I, I can't modify what I have, but what you can do is you can put, uh, if I showed you the resources page, what we what we have is the ability to embed my simulator or my animations or, or the other things into your site in what's called an iframe that uh, basically it's just code that you copy and paste and drop it into your, your site. And, and it, um, it, uh, there it would be, and it would be, Hey, this is what it's going to look like, you know, and, and, and that's what it's for that. That is what, the resources are for. So anybody that has questions on that, if they they have my email address, they can um, they can contact me. Great. And then Matt and Aaron Lady shared their Moon Over Norwalk Facebook page. Be sure to check that out. We'll get that linked on the yeah. uh, Chamber website as well, the Visitors Bureau website. Um, and we'll send all this information in a follow-up email. Um, we hope you'll join us for future webinars. We've got a monthly one. We were trying to do them on the 8th, so you guys remember April 8th, but uh, <laughs> the July one fell on a weekend. Um, so we're lining up our guest speakers for those. We've got some exciting ideas, but be sure to register for those. And think of your questions seriously. It's, it's really cool that um, Dan has experienced this in other communities and what might your business be able to take advantage of or avoid. Um, so think of your questions, uh, contact, uh, Matt, subscribe to Norwalk Ohio News. Uh, that weekly uh, feature is really interesting. And again, we'll just keep us on track for planning, only 48 weeks. So uh, we know how fast those go. 
Uh, It'll be here tomorrow. Yeah. It will be here tomorrow. We will not be ready and it will not matter. It will happen. Um, that that you, you just said something that may, I, I, I didn't say this and I know it's obvious, but I would take that weekly series that the newspaper is doing is, is really amazing. And keeping a copy of all of those articles in the in the community uh, historical record or the or the time capsule, I think would be phenomenal. If somebody opened up one from a hundred or from seventy years ago, <laughs> that would be so amazing. Please. And then last thing, if your uh, business or organization needs help with, again, safety, security, or controlling uh, traffic flow or questions about that, communications on that day, um, again, reach out to Art at Huron County EMA. Um, you can find his information online and we'll send it in the follow-up email as well. So, it, any, any other questions? No, I was going to say, too, you can always submit. We'll make sure that if you have any questions, we're all working together here as a team. We're trying to get this, make sure that we're going to get enough resources and get it all in one place. So no question um, is, is silly or anything. We sure if you have it, somebody else will too. And when it comes to that event planning side, um, do not hesitate to ask. All of us have done a, um, large sales events in some way, shape, or form, and um, we are here to kind of help make sure that that's successful for you. Thanks, everybody. Keep thinking about it. Start your planning. Um, submit your questions and events, and we hope to see you on June 8th. Thanks, Dan. We appreciate you so much. Yeah, that was great. Thank you very much. I appreciate being here, and thank you for all the work that you're doing to, to prepare for this. It's truly worth it. We'll be in touch with you soon. Thank you so Thanks, much. Everybody. I will be here. <laughs> thank you, guys. Have a great rest of your day.